us with your blood, Lord Jesus. Cover us with your protection and let your angels guard us, Lord God, and your Holy Spirit guide our minds and our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Okay, um, we are going to do this. Oh, it's on? Okay. I'm basking in the glory of my Lord. 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 He alone is all I need. He alone is all I need. And I will give him everything. I'm basking in the glory of my Lord. I'm dancing in the glory of my Lord. I'm dancing in the glory of my Lord. I'm dancing in the glory of my Lord. He alone is all I need, and I will give him everything. I'm dancing in the glory of my Lord. I'm dancing in the glory of my Lord. I'm basking in the glory of my Lord. I'm basking in the glory of my Lord. He alone is all I need, and I will give him everything. I'm dancing in the glory of my Lord. I'm basking in the glory of my Lord. He alone is all I need, and I will give him everything. I'm basking in
praise. God says he dwells in the praises of his people. Amen. Um, I, I'm going to be coming from different parts of the Bible today. So uh, what I'm asking you today is, for male and female, is are you a bride? Are you <clears throat> a bride? Or are you just fornicating? There is a difference. Are you a bride, or are you just fornicating? Uh, let's turn to 1 Corinthians. And for those who have their Bible, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 16 and 17. <clears throat> and when you get there, say, Amen. I forgot to bring my Bible. Okay. <laughs> you want to get this one? Is there extra ones in the back? No. I'm not sure. I left them upstairs. So. Well, we know you can. I was kind of rushing. And yeah. <laughs> At least you're here, right? <laughs> the word is in your heart. That's okay. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 16 and 17. <clears throat> and it says, What? Know you not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. If you are joined to the Lord, you are considered one spirit. We are all one in one spirit. There's a song that says, um, we, we are the circumcision, we worship God in the spirit. Remember that? We are the circumcision, we worship God in the spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. You ever hear that one? There are two, and I'm ready to roll in this. No longer I that live it. But, but you know, there, we are the circumcision, we worship God in the spirit. Other people worship their false, fake, dead, bent, gone, never really haven't been alive gods. They worship uh, idols. They worship statues. They worship jewelry. They, and no, we worship the living God. And God calls us in the Bible his, his bride. We are the bride of Christ. That's male and female. So guys, believe it or not, you are also considered as the bride of Christ. We are married to Jesus Christ. Now, a fornicator... A person, a fornicator, <clears throat> is a person who refuses to do it God's way. Consensual sexual intercourse between two persons not married to each other. That's how the dictionary describes it. That means that there is no innocence. Notice it says consensual, consensual sexual intercourse between two persons not married to each other. That means that there's no innocence. They know that they know that they know that they are sinning against God Almighty, who is and always will be. They take the easy and non-dedicated way out. You know people who are living together. We have people who are living together nowadays. We have people who, who refuse to get married. Have you ever seen couples that have been together for so many years and they just won't get married? And you ask them, why won't you get married? And they come up with all kinds of excuses. Well, Social Security, my checks, or, you know, I, the, where, the place that I live at, my rent will go up. They always come up with some kind of, what do you say, carnal excuse. But what about spiritual? You know? People are so worried about what's going on in the fleshly part of the world that they neglect the spiritual, what God tells us to do. Come together, get married. And, and this is called fornication. I don't care how many times they go to church. I don't care how much they read the Bible. They can go to Bible college, and they could, they could lay hands on somebody and, and claim a healing if they want to. But they are fornicating against God. Until how can you say that you are married if you haven't invited the Almighty God to the wedding? Amen? So they take the easy and non-dedicated way out. They are sheepish. They're chicken. They're sly whatever term one wants to use. They're selfish to use someone else's body without God's permission. Selfish people.
without God's permission. It even tells us in the Bible that if two people are uh, on fire, if two people, if, if the people who are dating one another cannot contain themselves, it says, let them marry. And this is what they're supposed to do, marry, not just take care of that little fleshly feeling that they have and think that everything's going to be okay. They deflower others, and they're rapists at heart. Because they're abusing a body that God made. God sends souls into bodies. We all know that you are not a body with a soul. Okay? We put the body first. You are souls with a body. See? We should be taking care of the soul. instead, And, and the soul, therefore the body will follow. Um, they're, they're raping. They deflower others. They disobey the Lord God Almighty for a moment of physical pleasure. And this is what they do. If you're not a bride of God, you're just fornicating. You are living the type of life, even if we're not speaking in a sexual way and we're speaking in just the living, just natural living. If you are living without God, you're fornicating with other idols. You're not married to Jesus Christ, who is the groom. God sent his son. How many songs do we have in our churches that starts out like that? God sent his son. Amen? That, there's a reason why God sent his son, so that we can be saved and cleansed from all unrighteousness. Now, what does a bride do? A bride, <clears throat> kahila, K-E-H-I-L-L-A. If you want to know the Greek word, kahila, is merely gathering. When you go to a when you go to a, 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 a wedding, what's happening? Everybody's gathering for this great event. Amen. This is it's called the gathering. I'm gonna go to Ecclesiastes 12, verses 9 to 14. Yeah, Ecclesiastes 12, verses 9 to 14. And it says, And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. Now we're talking about Solomon here. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words and that which was written upon the upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads and his nails fastened by the masters of assemblies which are given from one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books there is no end, and much study is a, is a weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Fear God. See, we're to fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So whatever you are doing, if it's good, God's going to judge it. And if it's evil, God's going to judge it. So we might as well do things the Lord's way. In order to make it he to heaven, we need to do it his way. Amen? Amen? To make it to heaven, we need to do the... It says, see, it says Solomon gathered the wise ones. This is what the bride of Christ should be. We are the wise ones. We are the ones, anybody that studies this Bible, anybody that studies God's holy word, are wise ones. This is wisdom. I'm not talking about earthly wisdom. I could care less about earthly wisdom because we're not going to be here long anyway. So we're, we're guaranteed, what, approximately 70 years of life? So... We better start uh, cleaning up on our word of God, getting to know the word of God. What does he require of us? Amen. Amen. So this is what the bride does, gathers people. We are as the body of Christ, as, as the bride of Christ. We are supposed to be gathering one with another any day of the week. No certain day of the week. Christians sometimes make it Sunday. Some people have it on Saturday. Gather together and discuss the God, the, the God that knows us and loves us, the one that we know and love. Amen? This is what we're supposed to be doing. Turn to 2 Chronicles 5.2. And it says, Chronicles 5.2. 
in 2 Chronicles 5.2, it tells you. Now, we know Solomon was one of the, he was the wise, he's known to be the wisest king that ever existed. Amen? Look what Solomon did. See, Solomon just didn't get anybody to get the ark of God. Solomon used wisdom. It says, then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and of the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel unto Jerusalem. Why? Call it says, to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. See, Solomon was wise. Solomon got the wise people. Solomon got the people that God uses to bring out something as holy as the ark of God. Now, the bride, she has a spirit of reconciliation, not degradation. How many people do we know in our private lives break things apart? They tear apart. They have a spirit of degradation. They, and and they, they, take, they break people apart. See, the bride of, as the bride of Christ, we are to be like him. When people get ready to get married, if you notice, if, if, if the couple is not getting married for physical, carnal reasons, you'll notice they've been together long enough where the woman kind of acts like the man. You ever seen a couple where the woman even kind of looks like the man? They look alike. <laughs> they, they've been together so long, they know each other so well. And this is how we should be with Jesus Christ. As a bride of Jesus Christ, we should be acting like him. We should be looking like him. And instead of gossiping and tearing people apart, instead of talking about your daughter-in-law like a dog, or instead of talking about your son-in-law like a dog, if you are a real Christian, you're going to pray for those people. Amen? That's the spirit of reconciliation. If your son loved that woman so much that he wanted to marry her, and he did marry her, well, then you try to love her too. Right? We're not perfect. If your daughter loved that man, I don't care if he wore a black jacket and had a cigar in his mouth, and if she loved him that much and she wanted to marry him, you try to love him as well. Pray for them. See, you put, we're supposed to reconcile relationship, put people back together. If you know a brother and a sister, uh, whether it be siblings or whether it be just in the body of Christ, if you know that somebody has fallen out with one another, the worst thing we can do, and I think we've all been there, I know I have, and I know I'm not the only one, the worst thing we can do is take sides. How many times have we been guilty of taking sides? That's not good. That is not the bride of Christ. That's not acting like the bride of Christ. That's not reconciling people. If a brother and a sister fell out with one another, you talk positive to the sister, and just as well as you talk positive to the brother. Amen. Because what happens is once they both get together, let's say they get back together, they're going to remember the mess that you spoke over them. And you might end up losing out after all. 1 Peter 2.17. I'm, I'm actually taking these out of the Bible to show you what God requires of us. To be brides, to be uh, Jesus' bride. 1 Peter 2.17. And the Bible tells you, you know, we don't have to go around and say, well, what should I do? What should I do to be a Christian? I don't know what to do. What should I do? Well, gee, just read the Bible. And the Bible will tell you how to be a Christian. In this Bible are the answers. Any, any question that you could ask God is in this Bible. Anything. I don't care if you ask them about dirt. It's in the Bible. It's like prego. It's in there. Amen. Amen. First Peter 2.17. What's it say? First Peter 2.17, it says, Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. And honor the king. I honestly believe that the people that cannot serve Jesus are jealous of him. Jesus is the firstborn in the family of God, the family of Christ. Jesus is our older brother. He's the big brother of the whole family. God gave him first. He's the firstborn. God gave his best. He gave Jesus. Now he wants us to give our best. Amen? Amen. For people to say, oh, well, um, I love God, but I just can't do this. And I love God, but I just can't do that. And, 
and, and I just can't seem to, I can't follow all this in the Bible, and, and it just seems like so much. Well, he gave his best, now you give yours. Either you trust God or you don't. It's as simple as that, folks. Either we trust in his word, we trust what God says, or don't marry him. We don't need, what's that called, before they get married, they write out, they have a, for the money, they want to make sure, when they write it out or something, to make a prenup. Do we don't need a prenup with God? God's promises are yea and amen. amen. God's not going to lie to you. When we marry him, you, I tell you what, God's, Jesus is the best groom anybody could ever want. And Jesus is also handsome. He's a handsome groom. The Bible says he is. Jesus is a handsome groom. He's awesome. He loves us. Nobody can love us like the Lord. And another thing I like about it is you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. As long as you pray about it and ask Jesus to help you with that situation. See, he gives us a chance to learn his ways. Amen. And then the Bible tells us he's married to the backslider. That's not giving us a license to sin. But it's telling us he's married to the backslider. And I'll get on that in a minute. What else does a bride do? She feeds you. John 21, 12. You know, I love fish. Especially in the morning. I love fish. I don't know how many people here like fish. I tell you what, I love fish. I, I, I liked fish and, until I read this. And after I read this, I began to love fish. And I like to eat it, mainly in the morning. And here's why. And I have odd ways, but that's okay. I love the Lord. Amen. I just do what Jesus does. Amen? Amen. Like Esther did. When Esther was going up to the king, all these other women were putting on gold and, and rings and hair bands. And they had twinkling things hanging from their hair. And they had on long flowing robes. And they put on perfume and everything. What did Esther do? She just went in with what the king liked. She knew what he liked. And she ended up marrying him. And this is what we know. Once you know what the king likes. Amen. I have to say it with a smile. <laughs> Once you know what the king likes, you're good. Okay, John 21, 12, it says, uh, no, no, I want to start up here. Let me see. Um, John 21, 12, I started with 12. It says, Jesus said unto them. No, no, I'm going to start with 4. There it is, verse 4. John 21, verse 4. It says, but when the morning was now come. See, this was the, all, what, I'm, what I'm about to read is happening in the morning. It said, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, children, have ye any meat? They answered him and said, no. And see, he, he, uh, God loves to feed us. And verse 6, he said, and he said unto them, cast a net on the right side of the ship and you shall find they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Verse 7 says, Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and he did cast himself into the sea. Whenever they girt themselves, they take their coats, and they put them in between their legs, and they tie it up so that they can run. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from the land, but as it was 200 cubits, dragging the net with fishes. Now this here comes breakfast, verse 9. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus said unto them, Have ye caught? And Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Sorry about that. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. See, Jesus gave them so much food that, that the net should have been broken, but it wasn't. When God gives you something, it's not going to break. When God gives you something, nobody can, can steal it away from you. What is giving to, given to me is for me. Nobody else can take it. 
See? And it says, uh, Jesus said unto them, come and dine. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to hear Jesus say that to you? Come and dine. And none of the disciples dared ask him, who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth it to them and fish likewise. See, he gave them in the morning for breakfast fish and bread. And we all know the miracles of the fish and the bread. Amen? So Jesus is having breakfast with them. Jesus feeds us. Uh, the bride of Christ has mimicked and learned her husband's ways. She's not rebellious. We should not be as rebellious children. God cannot deal with pride. The Bible tells us to resist the proud. She rises up early with Jesus, and she passes all tests. Amen. The bride of Christ, no matter what test comes up to us, no matter what the devil throws to us, we will pass that test. If you, have, if you can't pass the test, then you're not leaning on the everlasting arms of God. No matter what happens to us, we should pass the test. The, the song says, you ever hear the song says, leaning, leaning, you hear that? Leaning on the everlasting arms. That's what we should do. In order, God says, uh, he wants us to be holy. In order for us to be holy, we have to lean on his holy arms. She's holy like her husband, her maker. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1. If you look in 1 Peter chapter 1, you will see that 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 to 16, he says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. See, so... Holy living requires a totally different way of living. We can't go out there to the clubs and do the things we used to do. You, you're not supposed, that's not holy living. Cursing people out and being quick-tempered, that's not holy living. Being mean to people, that's not holy living. Fornication, adultery, that's not holy living. Lying on people, lusting, is not fulfilling the lusts of the flesh. That's not holy living. Sitting around, watching TV, 24-7, 365, and not giving God any time of your life, that's not holy living. And you know, today, nowadays, unless you're watching a Christian uh, program, and then sometimes you have to watch the Christian programs as well. You've got to be careful of them, too, because everybody that's preaching it doesn't have the Spirit of God on them. You know, but nowadays they're even saying uh, that, that, that they're using television, that supposedly television, to lullaby us. How many times did you watch the news? And it's always what? Fires or wrecks. Or somebody getting raped. Somebody, it's, it's news, yeah. But God gives us good news. That's what I like about my maker. That's what I like about my husband, my father in heaven, my, 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 I, I love about Jesus. God gives us good news. Amen. Amen. She knows how to please her husband. We're talking about all of us, not just one person. As the bride of Christ, we know how to please him. Amen. We have to know, if you don't know how to please Jesus, like I said, ask him. A-S-K, I said it once before, ask him. Ask him, say, Jesus, I don't, I want to come to you. I want to get to know you. I want to serve you. I want to talk like you. I want to walk like you did. I want to look like you did. I want to heal like you did. Amen. If you want to do all those things, you can. Everybody asks, you know what gets me? I said this before. Everybody's scared to death of God. They, 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 oh, I, I don't want to. I heard somebody say one time, I don't want to bother him. I don't like to bother him unless there's a sickness or an illness. I heard somebody say that one time. And I'm thinking to myself, what kind of relationship do you have with the Lord? You know, when you get up in the morning, you're supposed to sing. You know, this 
is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it, devil. And if you don't like it, shame on you. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And people are scared. No, God says, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will what? Give you rest. Give you rest. Amen? So if God is saying, come unto me, and you're not coming unto him, you're not asking him anything, who are you listening to? You can't, you never see what they, on TV where they have the devil on one side and the angel on the other. You got to be careful. Who are you listening to? If you're spending that much time on TV and with the radio and you're not spending any time with God, don't say anything whenever they control your mind. You know, they're using things on TV as a form of mind control. What doesn't the Bible say what goes into a man comes out of him? Yes. What comes out of you? When we talk to people, this is serious, huh? When we talk to people, what comes out of you? If somebody starts gossiping, do you gossip with them? When somebody starts doing those, they are they are killing characters. Do you kill people's character as well? Amen. We have to be careful what comes out of us. When you talk to people, are you con more concerned about desperate housewives than you are about First Peter? <laughs> you see? What comes out of you? The commandments, serving God. Somebody comes up to you and says, I had a horrible day. What was your day like? Was your day horrible like mine? And you tell them, no. <laughs> My, I woke up this morning, okay? I'm thanking my God for a new day, for another day, because the way I live my life, you know what? I shouldn't be alive today anyway. So that's his grace. God's grace woke us up this morning. Do you know we should all be dead? Come on, guys. We should all be dead because everybody sins. See, people can try to act like they don't sin. Everybody makes a mistake in some kind of way. If it wasn't for Jesus we would all be dead. You might little, little, you know, slip out a little cuss word, you know, or maybe get drunk. You know, some people do more than get drunk. Some people are so high on medications and stuff that they don't know if it's day or night, some of them. <laughs> you know, we have to give God time. Amen? God's grace is, is allowing us to breathe right now. We're breathing God's breath. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? She knows how to please. We should know how to please him. She's bound to her husband who is living and always will be. She knows who she is, and she, do, she knows whose she is. Like I said, somebody comes up to you and says that something, something wrong is going on in their life. What you do is we well, are supposed to have, what, the spirit of reconciliation? And if you know somebody's had a bad day or something, don't let that evil overcome your good. Yeah. That's evil. The devil wants you to join in with them. Because once you ever, we're, God's a creator, right? Everything we speak, we create. And if you continue to speak negatively, that's what you're going to be. You're creating your own world. See? So when somebody's having a bad day, you say, here, let me pray for you. Or even if you're not the kind of person to do, you know, some people can't do this. Some people are a little shy, you know. If you're not the kind of person to grab your hand and say, here, let me pray for you, you just tell them, I'm going to pray for you. You know? And they'll stop. They'll show up. They'll stop. It does. <laughs> it does. We have, here, here's what's happening. We're allowing evil to tell us what to do and how to be. Yeah. And we're not bold enough. Christians need to stand up. We're, we're not bold enough. I, this is what I'm seeing today. And God's speaking this to my heart. We have, he said, be strong and of good courage. When somebody evil comes up to you and you know that person's evil and they're saying something that's going to bring you down, you fight that. You say, in the name of Jesus, I bind that. Even if you don't say it out loud, in the name of Jesus, I bind that sentence you just said. Some people, I'm loud with it. <laughs> I am. Somebody says something like, oh, girl, if you don't stop, you don't stop, something, something, this is going to happen to you. No, no, I bind that in Jesus' name. That's not going to happen to me. I'm not going to accept that. But see, everybody's not that bold. And but you you can say it you can say it on your breath. You say, well, if somebody comes up and says something to you is negative, you say, I find it in Jesus' name. Yeah, you have a good day. <laughs> See? 
find it. You're allowed to. Why? Because God said so. <laughs> See? We should be bold in Christ Jesus. We are His. She is still glad to be called a bride of God. And she went and noticed something else. When, when, when a bride marries a groom, what, what happens there? What can you see? When, when two people get married, what do they do? They exchange what? Wow. And? Rings. Exactly, rings. Why do they put the ring on? Is it magical? The ring's not magical, right? They put that ring on to let people know that they belong to somebody. <laughs> God is good. Amen. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Bible tells you God gives you a mark. He marks you as His. And nobody can. The, 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 the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. And that includes not just the prophets, that includes anybody that he, anything, anybody that God has touched is anointed of him. Out of love. Now I know the Bible says God created evil and, and evil's not anointed, but either he's there for a reason. He does his job, we should do ours. Don't ever let Satan do his job better than you do yours. Don't ever sit there and allow something to happen to you that you know is wrong. Don't ever let it happen. Speak it out. You know, I want a swimming pool too one day, hopefully. But I mean, I, I'm speaking it. One day I'm going to have my little, what I've talked about, what I want, my little house in the country, you know, with some little couple horses. And I'm speaking it out. One day I'm going to get my little house in the country with some horses. And I'm going to dance like David danced. I'm going to make a bonfire. I'm going to invite all of you to my house. And we're going to jam. <laughs> yeah, good. I'm, and see, I'm speaking it out. It's not here yet, but I'm creating. And one day, when I have his mark. God said anything that you ask me for, if it is of his will, he will give it to you. Speak out good things. When the, de the devil comes to our minds, now you've heard many people say it. Joyce Meyer says it, but people said it long before then. It's been out for years. Your soul, it consists of mind, will, and emotions. And this is what the devil likes to prey upon. He preys upon our mind. A lot of people that are going through mental problems are going through those problems because when the enemy, when those little demons and devils came to them and started to speak to their mind, I mean, they don't always come up to you and say, hey, how are you doing today? You know, you're not going to always see something move and, and nobody knows, oh, that chair is floating. It's not always like that. They speak to your mind. And when they come up to you and they start speaking to your mind like that, when, when crazy stuff goes to your mind, and you're like, where did I get that from? You, can, you know it's crazy. You know, but certain things, you ever have something come to your mind, you're like, oh, I don't know, where did that come from? That's where it came from. The enemy is trying to, uh, what is it, uh, uh, convert you from what God would have you to think. So the best thing to do, the Bible tells us to take charge of that thing. You take charge of it. You say, I bind that thought in Jesus' name. I don't like that. I send you away. You have no power over me. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you that when you do that, God is going to step in, fight your battles for you, and you have overcome that mountain. It's faith. Faith, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. Amen. Faith like the seed of a grain, like a mustard seed. Amen. The, I want to take you to um, Jeremiah 3, verses 11 to 25. It's long, and this is it. Uh, after this, I'll be done. Jeremiah 3. I just want to read something to you. I want to read something to you. I mean, in fact, I'm going to end it on this. Jeremiah 3, verses 11 to end. It's long, so hang in there with me. I'll, I'll talk as I go along. It says, and the Lord said unto me, listen, this is what God's telling us. Jeremiah 3. I'm going to give everybody time to get there because this is good. This is good. This is good. Amen. Amen. 
Jeremiah 3, verse 11, it says, And the Lord said unto me, the backsliding Israel. Now, you got to remember, we're all Israel. We're included with Israel. Okay, that's why God tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are considered as a part of Israel. It says, And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel has justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Read this, and God is saying this to us today. Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. See, God is asking us to confess our sins. Please stop acting like you're getting away with it. He says, only acknowledge your iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. See, he says, you scattered thy, your ways to strangers. Israel went from underneath the covering of God to trust idols and strangers and other people's gods. God said, come back. Verse 15, he said, And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass, when you be multiplied and increased in the land, and in those days, said the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it, like we are now, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after, what? The imagination of their evil heart. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together, come together, notice, notice the words in here God showing us, and they shall come together out of the land of the north of the land that I have given him for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said... How shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a good heritage of the hosts of nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father and shalt not turn away from me. We are not to call anybody on this earth father like that in, in, in a godly uh, realm but God. God is our only father. Now we have uh, earthly fathers like uh, Jesus had Joseph. And, but, but no, God is our father. Surely as a wife treacherously departs from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me. See, Israel has been a bad wife to God many times. That's what, it's all through this Bible. They always turn their back on him and they get caught by another nation somewhere. And he says, A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Would you or would you not say that's happening to us right now in the United States? Our children are crying. Our children are crying. Our children, they, they say that, more, uh, that American children, while they're sitting there going like this, playing those games, children in other nations are learning how to fight. They're learning math. They're learning how to, to, to walk good and talk good. You know, and, and we have to go back to God. We forgot and then notice in verse 26, it says, for they have perverted their way. There are so many perverts in the world now, nowadays, it's a shame. Perverted their way. Return, you backsliding children, he says, and I will heal your backsliding. See, if you return to God, God can heal you. Remember I said earlier that God still loves you even though you're making mistakes. He said, ask him, ask of me. He said, return your back, and I'll heal your backslidings. But he can't do it unless you ask him first. God doesn't force himself on anybody. He doesn't have to. He said, behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hope from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. For shame has devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters, 
We lie down in our shame and, we con and our confusion covers us, for we have sinned against the Lord our God and our fathers from our youth even unto this day and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. Speaking up there where it says, for shame has devoured the labor of our fathers. You know what that reminds me of? You ever drive down a highway and you see big beautiful land, you see farms, and the houses are rotting. The, 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 the barns are falling in. Because the young people don't know enough to take care of what their fathers and mothers worked so hard for. Who's taking, who's taking care of the father and the mother labored on that land for 60, 70 years? Only for the children to be hooked on dope. To go out and rob, you know, and everybody's money hungry. And they won't take care of what their forefathers put there for them. It's there for you. They won't pay the taxes. Everything goes back to the government. The shame. For shame has devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth. So I end this by saying the bride becomes um, appreciative. We need to learn to appreciate things of God, appreciate him. We need to learn to be loving, kind, and wise. Use wisdom. Don't just anything blurt. Don't let, don't let anything just blurt out of your mouth. Think about it first. Use wisdom. Let God answer things for you. And she becomes to listen to her husband's voice. Amen? So I finish this by saying, are you a bride? Or are you just fornicating? Amen? Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for the word that you gave us today, Lord God. Let us take home, take the word home in our hearts, Lord God, and just think of some of these things that we learned today, Lord. If there's anything that we did to cause us to backslide from you, we confess it right now before one another. He said, confess your faults one to another. And we're all confessing, Lord, even me, we're all confessing anything that we've done that would separate us from you, Lord God. And we are putting our lives into your hands Touch our hearts, touch our bodies, touch our minds, Lord God. I call healing into every person's mind in this place right now and into their bodies, Lord God. And Jesus, we know what you did for us. We are your bride. We want to live. We want to learn how to live and talk like you did. We want people to look at us and see you in us. We want people to look beyond our faults and to see the Jesus in us. This is what we're asking for today. Lord, we also lift all the prayer requests that came to us. We give them to you, Lord God, because you are the one that can handle them. And God, we also lift the people up to you that are incarcerated in prisons and those that are sick, those with cancer, Lord God. You know the ones that have prayer requests towards cancer and those in new birth ministries, those in this building. God, from the maintenance people to the very top floor. We pray for everybody in this building in your mighty, matchless name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. If there, is there anybody in here that hasn't accepted Jesus that would like to accept him? Um, because he's there for you. He's waiting for you. Amen. If anybody in here, just repeat this after me. Because there are people who don't like the hand raising or the coming up front. I don't believe in doing that. Because there could be somebody that would accept Jesus Christ. And they wouldn't because of embarrassment. Um, so just say this after me in your mind. You don't even have to speak it out. Just say it after me or whisper it. Jesus, I love you. I want to be a part of your bride. I want you to be my savior. Teach me, Jesus, the things that I need to know. Cleanse me. Wash me clean. Forgive me of my sins. From this day forward, I belong to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. The Lord heard that and man didn't. I like it because that's all we need, right? Amen. That's all that we need.